Hello there, I am Christopher Sieber and I play Trent Oliver in the new hit Broadway musical The Prom at the Long Acre Theatre and I'm here to talk to you today. I'm so excited to be working on this show because it's been about seven years that Casey Nicola first approached us and said, hey, I've got something for you. And we sat in his apartment and we read a script that didn't even have a name yet. And so when we get to go to work and we're working on this, this collaborative, wonderful thing that is now The Prom, um, it was always just hanging out with friends and making a musical. And that hasn't happened to me ever. And it's just so thrilling and you're going to love it. I swear to you, I swear to you, you're going to love it. I did a show called Shrek, the musical, and I played Lord Farquaad. I was, uh, I'm 6'2 in real life, and I was about four and a half feet tall in the show. I did the whole show on my knees, and I had this whole rig thing. We called it the rig, and basically it was the puppet legs in front of me. So I was on my knees, and these little legs are up in front of me. And right during the performance, I was up in the elevator, and one of my puppet legs came off, broke off, and just fell forward. I can't do the number, I can't do the show with, with that happening. There's just no way. So so I called to my stage manager while the Duloc dancers are right in front of the curtain and I'm backstage kind of panicking not, and I yell to my stage manager, stop the show, I broke my leg. Pandemonium, everybody running around this theater, they stopped the show and they came running back. They brought me down in the elevator and I walked out with this leg just flipping and flopping in front of me. And everyone was like, oh my God, I thought you broke your leg. And I said, I did, I broke my leg. Oh, my Farquaad leg. Oh, no, not my leg, this leg, this leg. The biggest fitting I had was to see if I could fit into the magic box where three people go in and one person comes out and it's this whole, and that was my fitting for the show. I just, <laughs> my fitting for the show was to make sure that I could fit in the magic box. So I was going to go back into the show Chicago playing Billy Flynn again. So I get up to the box office to re-familiarize myself with uh, the show because it's been about seven years since I last did it. And I'm at the box office and I'm getting my ticket from the thing and I get a phone call saying, uh, we don't want you to see uh, Chicago today. We'd like you to see the revival of La Cage à Folle, which is at the Long Acre Theater where the prom is currently playing. And uh, I said, well, that's a strange way to re-familiarize yourself with a show that because I'm gonna go see another show. So I went and saw the show. Harvey Firestein, who's a dear friend, is playing Zaza, Alban, and um, Jeffrey Tambor was supposed to be uh, playing George. George uh, Jeffrey wasn't in the show that day. Uh, so I saw the show, went backstage to see Harvey, friends, you know, like you do, and I, I knocked on his door, knock, 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 and all I hear is like, enter! And I open the door and he sees me, he grabs me, he's in a turban, he's in like a turban in a bathrobe, and he's like, what do you do, come on? He grabs me, throws me on his couch, slams the door, turns around, are you gonna do the show with me? It's like, what? Are you gonna do the show with me? What show, what show? This show, this show. What happened, what happened? Jeffrey Tambor just up and left. <laughs> I've had one night stands that lasted longer. And I said, yes, yes, absolutely, of course, yes. And um, seven days later, I was starring opposite Harvey Firestein in La Cage à Folle, and it was magical. Agatha Trunchbull has to do acrobats, acrobatics. And so during the training for that, I was at Chelsea Pierce, which is this fantastic gymnasium with, uh, you know, pommel horses and sprung floors and stuff. So I have, cause I had to do a flip over a, over a, a what do they call that thing? The, the pommel horse thing. So I had to do, I had to do this flip and then land like an Olympian because she wasn't a former Olympian. And on the day before my put in for Matilda, I broke my hand right here, my metacarpal. I went up like this and smacked my hand into the pommel horse hard, and um, I, 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 I didn't go in the show for another six and a half weeks. I have had the great honor and pleasure and privilege to be in uh, the longest running American musical on Broadway called Chicago, where I played Billy Flynn, I believe, six separate times. And I will always, always go back. If you'll have me, Barry Weisler. I'm available in about 30, three years, four years, five years. Yeah, because prom's gonna be running a long time. During my number, Gaston, there's this, there's a track on the stage um, and there's a little thing in there called the dog. And the dog is the thing that brings the set backwards and forwards, like magically, it kind of glides across the stage. And they have a thing called a knife and the knife goes into the dog to move the set back and forwards. So during Gaston, front and center, I, um, I reach for LeFou's foot 
and my pinky, this pinky right here, goes into the track and it snaps during my number. And it is, I, I won't be graphic, but it wasn't, it was, it was gross. It was gross. I broke, you can still see the swollen knuckle right there. Um, so that <laughs> was there and I didn't know what to do and I just went smack and I smacked it back in place. Now, if you know the show, you know what's coming up at that point and we used to call it the clink line where everybody in the show has two heavy pewter metal mugs and it lasts for about a minute where you're clinking with the person next to you clinking there, clinking there, clink, 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 big old swelling, broken finger, getting hit over and over and over and over with a hot, like a metal, oh, it's just painful. I finished the number. I finished the number. I made it through. I went to the hospital. It was broken. They put a little metal splint on it, just like that. I said, can you give me a cast or something or a sling? They're like, you don't need it. I was like, no, I can't go back. I can't go back with this. And they're like, yeah, you can, you can. I went back to the show about a week later, but every time I had to punch anybody, because Gaston's very violent, I had this. I'll never forget it. This gold lame curtain that you didn't know what the set was when you uh, when you came into the theater. All you saw was this gigantic gold lame curtain that was uh, 30 feet too long. So it kept going and 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 then it finally revealed the set. And on that set was Betty Buckley in this gorgeous electric blue dress and me in this wonderful white like a uh, Elizabethan almost uh, coat and, and it was just the audience went nuts because first of all it's Betty Buckley and second of all because it, they didn't expect to see the set that what it was it was very simple but it was very gorgeous um, I'm sad that it didn't run longer but I bought a house there was this small skit called Spamalot um, that we did on Broadway and that was one of those shows that was not even work. And going to work every single day, we would all get there early so we could hang out because once the show started, you're just kind of like running around constantly, constantly, constantly. All you're doing is changing costumes, getting into another character, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But we, um, we would get there early just to say hello and hang out because we, we adored each other. It was fantastic. Rapunzel's Prince understudies Cinderella's Prince, which is Greg Edelman. Greg Edelman and I, uh, we had two wolves, like two wolf brothers, and then two prince brothers. So, um, I understudied Greg. Never had any understudy rehearsal because there just wasn't time and there we were still in preview. So, Greg turns his back and goes, boom, at the end of Hello Little Girl. He twists his back, he tweaks it, and he has to crawl off stage because he tweaks his back so bad he can't walk. So, Beverly Randolph, our stage manager, comes up to me and she says, oh, Christopher, by the way, um, you're on. I was like, perfect. She said, you're very calm about this. I said, it's my favorite show. I know every line, I'm fine. And I was amazing. Here's the deal. At the end of act one, they, um, uh, there's a thing where the ugly stepsisters, they cut off their toe and they cut off their heel and they try to put their foot in a golden slipper, right? And then, and then Cinderella's prince takes the shoe like this and he pours, it, pours a little blood out of the shoe. And it's a simple stage trick, it's very fun. You have this big old bladder of blood on your back with a hose that runs down your arm and it kind of goes like right about there, so when you're, or right about here. So when you're holding the shoe, this little, little hose of blood goes into the shoe as you're holding it and, and you squeeze it. It's like one of those squeezy things. So had I had rehearsal, they would have told me to squeeze it once not 25 times, because when you squeeze it 25 times, the pressure in the bag on your back builds to the point where it is now a fountain. And it sprays, it sprays like 25 feet into the audience, okay? And Paul Gemignani, our conductor, is right there, and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, the cast is kind of freaked out because it won't stop. And I'm turning to them like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I'm spraying them with blood. Milky White is now pale pink, and there's just, there's just blood everywhere, blood everywhere. And, I, and my brother Mark was seeing the show for the first time, and, and I, I heard him going, this is awesome! So, um, but then Laura Benanti had no idea. She had to come on <laughs> and she, <laughs> she was off stage, right? She comes back on and she just looks at the camera. He's covered in blood. <laughs> and I put her up on the horse and we ride off into the, into the kingdom. Mm -hmm.